Ever wonder what motivates people get plastic surgery? Did they regret it? What can we learn from the weird and wild stuff that are happens at our plastic surgery clinics? We're going to tell some stories, get some laughs, and learn on Clinic Talk with Sabrina Sajin on the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. my friends. I'm Dr. Javad Sajjan. And of course, I'm here with my wife and CEO of Allure Aesthetic, Sabrina Sajjan. Welcome back and thanks for listening. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts to support the channel. On Clinic Talk, we tell real stories of fun, strange, hopeful, and educational things that happens at our clinic from day to day. We get a lot of weird and hilarious happenings at the clinic. You can find the clinic at AlluraAesthetic.com for more information. So, John, what clinic stories are we talking about today? So, John, you know, when I started practicing on my own, it was about four and a half years ago, I had patients who sort of flowed with me. So, when I first started, I didn't have like my own office, right? Yeah. So, I worked at um, a basically shared space in the mall mm-hmm. at, a, at a medical spa. Mall and, doctor. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, mall doctor. And then I shared space at a gym. It was like a fancy gym. <laughs> And then I had space there and then eventually ended up getting my own space. But some of those patients have followed me from the mall to the gym and then to my shared office and to now our exclusive offices that we have, you know, with God's grace has gone so well. But I got, and some of them have my direct number just yes. because in the beginning, that's how it worked. So I got some texts, John, from some uh, VIP patients, as I call them, who've been with me for the past four and a half years saying- You used to give your patient number out to Injection patients? Yes, because um, my locations were in transit and I needed a way to reach. And in the beginning, I was the receptionist, I was the scheduler, and I was the doctor. Hi, this is doctor. How can I schedule an appointment with me? Yes, exactly. (laughs) And so when I did it myself, we didn't have um, that many rules. It was just sort of, you know, come on in and we'll take care of you. And a lot of those patients have followed me through. And I got a text, John, from one of my VIP patients or old timers saying that they were struggling with scheduling with the new rules. Yeah, I know. So what's going on? So there's a few, I would say a good handful or so patients that, you know, have been with you for a long time. Since the beginning. Yes. And they followed you and they still say that every time they come in that they knew you when you were in the mall um, yeah, I, I like them all. <laughs> well, it's, it's really, we're really thankful for them to really support you and to follow you really. Um, that's really nice of them. But, you know, as our practice has grown, now we have three locations. We have a lot of different staff members. There's so, wait, but there's no ex- locations in the mall, <laughs> no. not in the gym. We have all standalone now. Yes. Um, you know, bigger practices, more organized practices come with rules. Lots of rules. <laughs> We know a lot of people can't don't like the rules. We sometimes don't like the rules, but we have to follow the rules. Mm-hmm. And that's just the only way we can keep things standardized. So a lot of these patients, um, you know, they were used to just coming on on any day, coming on on any time. Yeah, the rule was, well, you know, if I'm in clinic and... Just come and on inject, in. Come on in. We'll, we'll squeeze you in. We'll figure it out. Just come in the lobby and sit there. We'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of those patients are used to that. Um, and we had a few of them that... Literally, we're like, first, their conversation started off, where's Dr. Sajan on Wednesday, for example? We're like, uh, why? Mm. And they're like, well, we're just going to come on in. And so you can, <laughs> we're just going to come on in so you can put some Botox in my forehead or put some filler in my lips. Is that, uh, it doesn't work like that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean it doesn't work like that anymore? I'm going to just come on in. He knows me. Like, I know he knows you, but it doesn't work like that anymore. And it was just back and forth and back and forth. And they basically didn't believe us. They hung up and tried to call again Mm -hmm. to find another person. Mm -hmm. And then the same story happened. And then they texted you. Yeah. Then they text me being, well, you know, we're trying to come see you. We can't come in. There's what's going on. And and the challenge is, you know, we've been really blessed. And now I'm booked out several months, you know, for appointments or surgeries. And... So we have more structured rules. You know, I, I, I do surgery most of the week and I do some clinics, still do see consults and follow-ups. And so those patients, right, they couldn't get in on the yeah. days they wanted. Yeah. So those patients, they want to come on certain days, um, you know, they want to come to a certain location and 
you know, we have certain spots reserved for surgery, of course, and then other days for clinic. Um, some of them, um, you know, don't understand that, unfortunately. And I, I, I know it can be hard because you're used to just, you know, calling in and just come on in. Mm-hmm. And it's not like that anymore, right? You have to get on the schedule. And usually the schedule is out like a few months, which, you know, they don't like and they feel like we should give them special treatment because they've been with us for so long. And I truly want to give them that treatment. And we want to, you know, um, give them what they want. We want to get them in as soon as possible. But there's other patients that have been waiting for months also. You know, we have patients waiting three, four months to come see one of our surgeons here, you know, for even if that even if that's for a Botox or filler. Um, and we've offered them, do you want to see maybe a PA or do you want to see an RN or maybe another um, another doctor? But they're very, you know, insistent of they have to see Dr. Sajan mm-hmm. and they have to see him on this day and they have to see him on this time. And we've accommodated them a few times, but now as we get more and more busy, mm-hmm. it's getting more challenging and difficult to, um, you know, squeeze them in on the schedule or squeeze them in on a surgery day because it's so unpredictable and we don't want them waiting. But at the same time, we want to, you know, take care of them. Um, but, you know, they, eventually they're going to have to get used to the rules and going to have to come on certain days and times that are available for clinic only. Um Another issue we've been having um, with patients that I think that have been with us for a long time is, you know, we don't accept checks um, for injectable patients. Back in the day, if I got payment, I was happy. (laughs) That's true. Um, But yeah, we don't accept checks like personal checks for injectables because the patient receives the injectables. Then they give us a check. Now that check may not get deposited for another day or so. And then it, it doesn't get cleared for another day or so. So we understand, you know, you, they have the money, they, we, we trust them, but unfortunately we've had instances where people's checks have bounced, um, and, or they've placed stop payments on their check Mm -hmm. after their treatment, even though they're happy. Um, and when you try to contact them or call them, it's unfortunate and they won't answer you. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately every rule we have has a story. And if you're one of my, you know, VIP older patients, uh, who's been with me, I'm happy to share those stories with you, but like the check story, we made that rule after somebody literally bounced it, you know, it was an old time patient, bounced like a four, three or $4,000 check. And then, you know, we don't want to chase people for money or be angry or upset. It's just not worth it. And we're not here to send people to collection. So, you know, it, it's, it's just a situation that I don't want to be in. I don't want the practice to be in. So that's why we came up with that rule. Yeah. So, you know, we have to either collect a credit card payment or we have to collect cash. We're happy to do either of those two things. But unfortunately, we just can't collect personal checks for treatments that have already happened. So one of the patients uh, texted me (laughs) and said she was really upset about the service fee. What's going on with this? Yeah. So, um, you know, there there's certain fees that are are charged by certain companies. And for example, if you're using financing, there's fees that financing companies charge directly. But yeah, that's that's the main reason we don't collect checks, um, you know, after a treatment is done, because, you know, we don't want to run after people. And, mm-hmm. You know, I understand that a lot of the old time patients are um, are used to that and are used to maybe giving checks and stuff. Um, but those are just the new rules. Every rule, unfortunately, like you said, has a story behind it, has a reason why it's in place. Mm hmm. So, John, um, there were were also a couple of issues with some of the um, old time patients. They texted me to come in and I was just like, come on in. And I I said they could they were okay waiting in the lobby all day. So what was wrong with this? Yeah. So unfortunately, because especially because of COVID. Oh, yeah. Yeah. um, um, We can't have patients waiting in the lobby for three, five, six hours. They were okay with it. They said, we'll just come and wait all day. I have my (laughs) iPad or my iPhone. I'm just going to relax in the lobby. (laughs) Yes, they have said that. And they've done it. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had one patient that, you know, didn't even call or text or anything, just showed up and was like, oh, Dr. Sajan's in clinic. He can see me, right? We're like, uh, you don't have an appointment. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, a lot of the patients, you know, the, the ones that know you for a long time are definitely willing to wait, you know, the three, four, five hours in the lobby until you can see them. But even then, like, we really don't have availability, you know? Mm. We have to limit the amount of people in the lobby. We have to limit the amount of people in the day. Mm-hmm. We only have, cer- you know, a certain amount of rooms. Um, so it's really important that, you know, I understand it's hard to get used to the new rules and the schedule, and you may have to wait a few months. Um, but 
you know, we, we all have to get used to the rules and, you know, we all have to work together to make it work. And this, this is the only way we can do it. And one of the main reasons, you know, we schedule people, you know, we have the privilege of seeing many patients. And one of the things we don't do is rush. We take our time. We give, I give every patient, I try my best to give them an amazing experience. Because although it's something I've done, you know, many times, I know it's the first time for many of the people. So we take our time. And because we take our time, sometimes things get pushed out. But the main goal is, and this is one of my true principles, is, and you guys can all quote me on this all day. And that principle is, I always want to do the best I can, not the most I can. The goal here isn't quantity, it's quality. So moving on. Mm-hmm. So happy Mother's Day to everyone. It was a week and a half ago. Yes. Right? Um, well, we had the funniest thing we saw. So we were at a grocery store, Fred Meyer. Yeah. Picking up our, st- our stuff, the one here closest to our office. And we saw this guy in line. Yeah. What was it, John? Yeah, it was this, um, it was this guy in line and he looks super worried. Yes. And he was from the same part of the world that we are. He was Indian, just so you get a description. Yeah. It looked like he had a panic on his face. Very worried. Yes. And, you know, he's right behind us in line. We're just getting normal groceries for the week. And he has a bouquet of flowers that are all dead. They were like the most wilted beat up flowers you could have ever picked up they were all brown and there he had a balloon in his hand <laughs> yes that wasn't in a different language wasn't it like hispanic or it was something spanish it was spanish yes yeah. yes and he was definitely indian and we know that yes yeah. and it was it was written in spanish on the balloon and it was like a, almost like a flat balloon like all all the air had left the balloon yeah the helium was out <laughs> so it was half inflated you know normally if you let a balloon go it goes to the ceiling and it was on top of the belt for the groceries. And it was like just half up. It was so sad. You, could, was, tell, you could tell he was yelled at in the morning. <laughs> and now he's at Fred Meyer trying to find anything he can to make it up for his uh, significant other, <clears throat> spouse, partner, <laughs> wife, person. Yeah. Um, he probably got yelled at. He was super worried. It looked like he was in a rush. Mm-hmm, like he didn't mm-hmm. even bother going to the, you know, the other flower section to even look for other flowers. He literally went to the front, found the first bouquet he could, and found the first balloon he could, and he just kept went in line. Like, he didn't even try. And then I saw him, so I tell Sabrina in Hindi, our, one of our languages that we speak, hey, look over there. Uh, how sad is that? And the guy turns around and looks at us. <laughs> yeah, so that we ran really fast <laughs> out of line uh, that was, that to was, our car. That was out of control. Yeah, that was really funny. I mean, it really it was... It was so funny. Like, I really felt so bad. I wanted to go to the flower section and grab a normal looking bouquet and give it to him. No, that was that. That was too much. Maybe it was on Clarence. Mm, probably. Because it was after 12 on Mother's Day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's multiple you don't problems. You want to spend the money. No, no. I'm not, su- not surprised. <laughs> um, so, guys. So, you know, we post a lot of pictures on IG, right? And a lot of patients come to me. Because they really like some of them, not all of them, but they like extreme looks, right? They like exaggerated features. I do both. I do very natural, then I do exaggerated. I feel they complement each other. The fact that I can create a very exaggerated look makes it easier for me to create a natural look. And the fact that I understand what natural proportions fit the body allows me to really get a good grasp on what do I want to exaggerate or feature. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have a social media team. And they posted a picture of um, some lips that we filled. Lip filler, yeah. Yeah. Now, this was uh, the patient was an amazing patient. Patient wanted uh, more filler. And initially, the, the patient was booked with the nurse. Yeah. And the patient wanted a filler that's FDA approved, but it wasn't FDA approved for the lips. So one of the things people have to know is in the cosmetic world, you know, we at our practice only use FDA approved products. However... Although the product is FDA approved, you have to know that product has to be approved for the area to consider to be considered an on-label use. Mm-hmm. When you're using the product in a different part of the body than when it's approved, it's considered off-label. Or what that means is you're going in a different direction than what the label says on where you know the FDA says you can't use it. It's not illegal. Most people that I know, everybody I know in aesthetics does it. It's just the nature of what we do. Mm-hmm. So this amazing patient 
already had filler in their lips and they wanted- A few syringes already. Yeah. Yeah. She had a few syringes. You can look at the picture on my IG at Real Doctor Seattle. And she had an appointment with one of our nurses. Mm Mm-hmm. And a nurse consulted with her and the nurse was said, oh, you know, I think you have too much. And she, the nurse said she was uncomfortable. And we never push our providers. The provider's uncomfortable, don't do it. Don't worry about it. But if I'm, if I'm there and I do clinic with this nurse, um, they came to me, they're like, doctor, this patient drove four hours to get lip filler f- f- from our clinic because they know how great we are, we really are, thank God. And um, can you help take care of this patient? Um, you know, she doesn't want to drive back four hours so she really like, wanted the filler. Yeah, yeah. And she wanted Voluma placed in her lips. Now, Voluma is a filler that's FDA approved for the cheeks. More often, that's where it's usually used. But I, I've used it in the lips many times. Mm-hmm. Now, using Voluma in the lips is very challenging because it's a very thick filler. You know, in the mid face, it can last up to two years. So you really got to put it right. You don't have a lot of leeway. And it sort of stays where you put it. So... If you can get lumps, you can get irregularities, you can get bumps. And so I saw the patient and I shared with her, you know, you already have full lips. I told her that straight up. You have very full lips. I'm happy to do this for you, but it's going to look overdone. And, you know, some people might think it's weird. They might think it's too exaggerated. But however, if this meets your goal and you're okay with it, and I showed her, you know, I went sh- over what it would look like. I'll, I'm happy to do it. I've done it before. I'll do it again. No problem. You know, me personally... Uh, I love doing all procedures, but procedures that push the boundaries on creating new shape, new form, new figure is something that I really, really like. So I'm happy to do it. And it's something that I specialize in. So she was like, doc, do it. And I was like, sure. She said, I have to do it. Yeah, she had to do it. Yes. For other reasons that, we, uh, you know, she was just being funny, but uh, there's, there's a funny story behind it, but we'll, we'll certainly keep that to us. Yeah. And um, so I go ahead and we, we, you know, we review the risks, you know, when you get lip filler, lumps, bumps, bruises, you know, they're, they're, whenever you get filler, there's a risk of blindness in the face. So John, you know, the risk of blindness in the face is really interesting. Mm. So if people often ask me, so if I'm getting filler in my cheeks, why is it I can go blind? Yeah. You, you ever thought about that? Mm. So the reason for that is because the face is the only part of the body where the veins don't have valves. So what that means is if a filler gets in a vein normally, it'll just go down and it can't go back up. But because there's no valves in the veins of the face, the filler can go up. So what that means is if you get it into a vein in the face, it can travel up into the eye in, and into the retinal, retina, ar, retinal artery and boom, blind. Mm. Because the veins connect to the arteries and it can go upstream. So that's one of the reasons. Wow. So I explained all this to her and she's like, no, I still want it. I'm like, okay, sounds good. It's so funny because um, just talking about that specific risk, um, you know, all of our providers are very well trained about talking about risks to patients and setting expectations. And a lot of times when patients come to us and some of our providers explain to them that there is a risk of blindness and, you know, so forth, they get very surprised. They're Mm -hmm. like, well, I got filler somewhere else and they didn't say that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I've heard that multiple times. And I remember yeah. even, you know, many patients will get scared and they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And it's so sad and, you know, disturbing to know that other places or other providers um, you know, that, that are not part of our practice don't explain these risks to patients. You have to. You know, I don't think it's right. I think it's, I would say it's immoral in my opinion. You're going to do a procedure on somebody, uh, you know, you have to tell them the risks. And if that person doesn't feel comfortable, then don't do the procedure. What's the big deal? You have to be honest. You have to be upfront. You know, and I really believe that. that Any, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's truly um, very, very important to us is, you know, we want to explain the risks. We want to explain all the details to the patient complications. You know, again, it's not about how much we do, but it's the quality of the people that we take care of. Exactly. So, um, you know, we put, when I do the lips, I inject a little bit of numbing medicine in the corners. You don't feel much. We put numbing cream on that. That's it for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Take it off. And then we do the uh, injection with Voluma in the lips. Result, the patient's ecstatic. She loves it. Looks absolutely fantastic. She really loved it. Mm-hmm. She really did. She was like, put this on your IG. And we're like, all right, sure. We'll do that for you. Yeah. And then, so we post the picture on our IG, you know, it's in queue. And oh my God, the haters. <sighs> I know. So many people making fun, think that we're overdone. Someone's saying, no, thank you. Someone is saying duck lips, clown lips, this, that, and the other. What kind of haterade is this? You know, I don't understand. You know, one thing we have to be very clear. 
on IG, right? If you make a comment, all right, I'm going to say this right now, because we have our, our new social media coordinator starting Monday, somebody really amazing, excited to have her on the team, then you will get a nice response. Now, if you don't like that response, don't make a comment. IG is not a one-way platform. Comments can be sent both ways. So we love our pay patients. We love your comments. Well, we're going to be honest. If you are not nice to one of our patients before and afters, then we're going to make and not give you a nice response. We're not going to make fun of anyone. We're not going to body shame anyone. However, we will give a great response responding to the patient. We don't like deleting comments. We don't believe in that. We believe it's an open forum. So we're going to give great responses. Yeah, and, and it's really important to know that, you know, the patients that are, agree to post their pictures online, everyone, everyone should be respectful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's everyone's choice how they want to look. You know, if that's natural versus exaggerated, whatever that may be, you know, everyone has a different opinion. And if your opinion is not nice, keep it to yourself. And when somebody volunteers to, you know, give their, we don't pay people to use their pictures, it really helps a lot of others understand what they want and what they don't want. Like, for example, I'll have patients come to me for a consultation and be like, doc, I really like how you did this, this, and this, this one, this person's result, I don't like as much. Can you make it more like that? And me as a doctor, that really helps me understand what they want, right? Because when you're doing surgery, the last thing you want to do is be on a different page. So all the before and afters, all the IG posts, they help helps me create a portfolio of options I can offer someone. And if someone tells me what they want, that's great. Now, some doctors don't like patients bringing a picture of what they want. I actually want that because if I know what you're thinking, then I can try to create that for you. Or if it's not possible, I'll just tell you. But for me, it's really important to show people the spectrum or what can be done. And what can be done specifically by me, not by somebody else. Yeah, and, and that I think really helps the other providers as well. Um, like all of our injectors. Um, you know, if you show them a certain lip filler, like, okay, I like Voluma versus maybe I like Wrestle and Kiss or vice versa or something like that, then we're able to, you know, tailor the treatment or procedure to what they are desiring. And um, if it's something that we can do, then we'll let you know. And if we can't, we will, you know, be upfront about that. But it's really important um, that if people, you know, there's pictures posted online that everyone needs to respect each other um, and respect each other's opinions on what they want to do to their bodies. Exactly. So, um, guys, we had a crazy experience. So this past uh, weekend, we went to visit um, Sabrina's family together. We had an amazing time. We went to Maryland. Yeah. And when we were coming back on the plane, I got called to duty. <laughs> yes. So go ahead. You can go say ahead. It. Go ahead. All right. So we get on the plane. We're sitting, you know, um, uh, we got upgraded or, you know, so we were sitting uh, in the first cabin and we're sitting there normally. Everybody gets on the plane. And while we're sitting there, this one lady comes on with the dog, which is normal. People carry their dogs. Mm -hmm. And she has this huge carriage for the dog. And when she's walking in the aisle, down the aisle, I'm like, there's no way that's going to fit on her lap or go underneath her seat. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, so we're like, whatever. And then she sits down and then the, you know, the, then the flight attendant goes there and uh, she, it, because she can't put it, she calls for help because she can't put the dog carriage <laughs> underneath her, right? It was pretty big. It was huge. It looked like a bird cage, like, like a cage for birds. I thought yeah. it was a bird. Um, so nevertheless, she can't do it. So then there's a whole commotion about where they're going to put it. And, and the like, flight attendant's like trying to put it in the cat, on the whatever the um, overhead, space. overhead space, not fitting in there. It's, it's too big for her lap. They told her you yeah, can't hold it. It won't fit underneath the chair. Um, there was no other seat that it would fit in. It was then, full. Yeah. Then he tried to put it in the first class cabin storage mm -hmm. where they put their people's jackets. Wouldn't fit there. And then he tells her that we, we need to check this in. Mm -hmm. So then the whole plane's bored. Then we hear her crying or something, yeah. didn't you? Exactly. She starts like whimpering and there's this, there's this whole commotion about that. And then eventually they take the carriage away and they- um, And then another person comes in, in like more of a suit. Yes. Right? Yeah. So the, we were flying United. And so the, so the dog thing is ha handled and then we're still sitting there and this like people keep visiting her, the attendants. We're like, what's going on here? And then eventually we see somebody more like, looks like a higher level uh, manager person come yeah. with a tie, a United- uh, like suit or something like that. And this gentleman goes and takes, there's a guy sitting next to her, tells him to get up and sits next to her mm -hmm. and starts talking to her. We're like, For a What's good, like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And they're holding the flight. So we're like thinking, okay, is this some kind of VIP lady? What's going on? Maybe she's a Senator. We're in the East coast. Who knows? Mm 
Um, and then, so he's talking to her very nicely, very calm. I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. And then eventually he goes away. But then he comes back and then I hear him and they said, oh, we made a decision that you can continue flying this airline. Yes. Yes. I heard him say something like that. Yes. There was something about not flying or flying the airline. You're right. Yeah. And so then apparently he walks away and they're normal. And then the, the pilot, uh, the plane, the, they close the jet, the door and the plane starts getting towards the runway. Yeah, we're and, on the runway, I think. Yeah. Yes, and we hear her starts coughing and then sneezing violently, like the most violent sneeze and cough I've ever heard. Yeah. And we're like, what's going on? Then we hear the dog barking. And we're like, okay, what's going on? <laughs> and then there's this guy next to her who we thought was with her, but he's not. He's not with her. And he's so embarrassed. It looks like he Because everyone to... keeps turning around. <laughs> yes, and looking at him. I thought he was going to try to put a bag over his face, but the vomit <laughs> bag wouldn't fit. He kept turning his face out there way and he didn't want to look at her. I know. <laughs> and then we, I see like a flight attendant rush with two paper bags yes. to her. Yes. And I'm like, I think she's vomiting. Yes. And we start hearing the sneeze. That sounds like a very wet sneeze. Then it turns into- I'm like, what is kind of noise is that? And then it turns into vomit and they're running. They're basically taking tissues. They're throwing the tissues at her. <laughs> they're giving her vomit bags and we see the bags filling. <laughs> And um, and the dog is going wild, and this guy next to her seems like he just wants to die and leave. <laughs> and then literally the plane is like on the runway. Yeah, it's like literally about to take off. It's he's the pilot has already pressed his foot on the accelerator and it's going. And we see the attendant. So the plane's about to take off. The attendant's with her now. Runs back, and the lady tells him, "I can't do this. I can't do this. I want off the plane." She starts screaming. Yeah. And then the flight attendant runs and picks up the phone as the pilot's taking off the plane. And she's like, we, we can't go forward. This lady wants off the plane. Yeah. And then and it's, uh, the plane squeaks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they, they somehow stop the plane. They make an announcement. And your guests, well, United, whatever. We have a customer service issue. We're going back to the uh, gate. Jet, yeah, gate. And so, they, we have, we're, so we're stuck there for like 15, 20 minutes. This lady is filling vomiting bags. And then they announce, mm-hmm. hi, um, United customers, is there a medical professional on the plane? Yes. And so they're about to turn the plane over. They're turning the plane. They call for this. And I go to raise my hand and Serena pulls it down. I was like, no, she's, you know, she's, you know, what are you going to do? I know. I know. I'm like, oh man. Um, and then, and then the flight didn't ask you. Yes. Yes. And they asked me and then I go, I'm um, like, yes, I know I'm a doc. It's like, oh, can you come evaluate this person? <laughs> they actually had some basic equipment. They had like a pulse ox, uh, blood pressure monitor, stethoscope. First aid kit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, so then I go over there and it smells so bad. It smells like vomit. There's a little dog there, big dog, vomit bags. And so I go next to the lady. The other guy gets up. She said she didn't want anything. Yeah, she didn't want anything. I put the pulse ox on her. It was okay, normal. Blood she pressure She seemed normal. really like nervous. Very anxious, very anxious person. And then, and then like, the other lady next to, on the other seat was trying to help her and coach her too. Remember, yeah, she, she came and she helped. She was trying to too. counsel her, trying to calm her down. Yeah. She might have been some kind of therapist person or something. And then she, she's normal. I nicely asked her, Are you okay? Everything good? Anything you do? She was like, No, I'm good. She's going to be left alone. Poor lady was embarrassed. She was all red, super red. Mm-hmm. So then I go back and sit down. I didn't get any vomit on me, thank God. Um, and then they turn the flight around and they, and they take her off the plane. Yeah. That was wild. And they give her her carriage. She puts her dog back in there. Yes. It literally delayed the flight like an hour. At yeah. least an hour. Yeah, it went back. Then they had to, then the crew had to come on and sanitize that whole area. And they had to clean it up. And that guy was all embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking back. Remember when United had that Asian doctor? They like pulled him off the plane and beat him up and he oh, broke his teeth and oh, face. Yeah, yeah. They don't do that anymore. They have these fancy people that calm people yeah, down. Yeah, the guy in the suit came yeah. to defuse the issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was a wild week. Yes. So we finally made it back home. Okay. We did. It was a great trip. It's so much fun. Thank you for listening to Clinic Talk on the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts to support the channel. Tune in next time for more Clinic Talk. We have more great stories coming your way. For my live surgeries on Snapchat and adventures throughout the week, catch us on all social media at Real Doctor Seattle. See you next time. Bye. Damn what?